Welcome everyone to Scratching and Surviving, where we help you gain the advantage you need to win your survivor pool. Let's look at week eight. All right, guys, we are entering week eight of the NFL season. The season just flies by two months in now. And most of you, probably just about all of you who are watching this or listening are alive in your survivor pool. So congratulations for surviving this long. I know I've seen some of the comments and some of you guys are, of course, new to this. You weren't there in week one where I went over a lot of this stuff. So refer back to the first week, week one, if you're confused as to anything that is going on. But we go over different strategies. There's always going to be a different strategy based on the amount of people that are in your pool. If you're in a large pool, you're going to play it slightly differently than you're if, if you are in a small pool. And certainly if you only have one pick as opposed to multiple picks, we're going to play those differently as well. But as always, I like to jump over into the Survivor Grid website. If you're not familiar with that site, it's SurvivorGrid.com. And really helpful for survivor pools, as you can see, gives you a layout of all the teams and their future matchups. It also gives you the estimated line on those future games. So it gives you an idea of how valuable those teams are going to be in the future. Now, this first column, win percentage, actually second column, we're not going to talk about EV much. Um, I'll go over it, but we don't talk about the EV particularly because I don't know exactly how they're calculating their EV. We'll go over it with my spreadsheet, but W percentage is your win percentage, and that's going to be based off the Vegas line. Again, mine's going to be slightly different when we head over to my spreadsheet. P percentage, that's the key that this website does for us. That's the probability or the pick percentage. So that's letting us know how often each one of these teams are being picked in major pools on the ma on the major websites, the Yahoo's, the Office Football Pools, CBS, things like that. And the pools that do give them access, they're getting that information. So it is helpful for us. Of course, not every pool is created equal. The rules are different. You may have double picks in your pool, but it does give you an idea of where your pool is going, where the ownership is going to be, which can be extremely helpful. Okay, so let's dive into week eight. I've got this sorted by win percentage. And as you can see, the top team is the Rams. Now, if you were with me last week, what did we say? I wanted you guys, if you had the Rams, right? If you had the Rams left, I wanted you to save it in a small pool, save the Rams and take Tampa, right? Because I wanted this week, you were going to get that leverage that over the rest of the field. And we see that now where only 9.7% of entries of in pools can take the Rams. Why is that? because a lot of people have taken the Rams. So if you were one of the people who did have the ability to save the Rams, I liked saving the Rams for this week. They're at Houston, a touchdown or more favorite. Obviously, there's some other big favorites here this week, but I'd love to be able to play the Rams right now this week, especially in a small pool where there's a possibility I'm the only one or maybe one of two people who can take the Rams. I believe I talked to my brother this weekend. I was up in New York. He's in that pool that we were talking about. It's similar to what uh, the type of pool that I want to talk about where he's got 13 people left in the pool and he's only got a couple of people now who can take the Rams. So he has taken the Rams himself, so he wasn't able to do this. But those people who are now on the Rams are going to have a lot of leverage on the field. And that's what this EV is. It's expected value. Now, how they're doing their expected value calculation, I'm not 100% sure, but it makes total sense here. If the probability is low, uh, or I keep saying probability, apologies. If the pick percentage is low for a team that is the biggest favorite of the week, then you're going to have a high EV. Another word for EV would be leverage. So there are a few people that are going to be on the same side of this game as you. And in doing that, you're giving yourself the best opportunity to win this pool. I went over the numbers last week. For you, for you newcomers, even for some of you who watched the podcast last week, go back and check it out. I just break down from a, I did a whole um, sheet where I showed you guys what the advantage would be if you were the only one on Tampa and the rest of your pool had Arizona and what the probability was that Arizona wins and Tampa loses, et cetera, et cetera. You could be in that situation here this week, but the advantage this week is you might have the best team in the Rams. So if you did have the Rams available and you're in a small 
small pool especially, I would highly suggest taking the Rams. If you're in a large pool with multiple entries and you do have some Rams available for you to take, you're going to at least want to fill um, a couple of those spots with the Rams, if not every spot that you have available with the Rams because of this leverage that we're getting. Right, so if these other teams lose, Buffalo is the next best team here. They're a 13 and a half point favorite. Of course, we don't expect any of these teams to lose. Quite frankly, as this season has been going on, none of these big favorites have lost. So the eliminations in these pools have been teams that where people are taking teams that were not the best team necessarily that week on the point spread, but they had little future value. So I've lost some some picks along the way in the multiple ones where it was Pittsburgh. Um, when they lost to the Raiders, the Raiders losing to the Bears, where you're in large pools and you wouldn't want to take some chances, especially when you've got a lot of picks. I started some of these pools with 60 or 70 picks. So you're going to take some chances there. And, you know, taking those chances is actually, so far, it's backfired, right? So my strategy in take, in doing this is we generally want to be underneath the market. So if the market is taking a team 40%, and they're a 10-point favorite, and we've got an 8-point favorite that's only being taken 5%, you really want that team that's only being taken 5%, even though they're a slightly less of a favorite in that game, reason being we get high leverage there. Again, I went over the math. If you want to check out last week's podcast, and uh, it might make a little bit more sense, but it should make sense from just a common sense standpoint where we, we would love to wake up. If you're in a pool with 15 people left, and you're the only one with the Rams this week, you'd be ecstatic. Especially, you'd love to see everyone else in the pool take one team. If they all took um, Cincinnati, which seems to be the most popular play here this week, if everyone was on Cincinnati and you were the only one on the Rams, you would love that because you know there's a scenario out there where a Cincinnati loss and a Rams win, you win the entire pool. That's what we're trying to get to. And that's a lot of what we're doing each and every week is trying to get ourselves now as we're getting deeper into the season in the position to win the pool. Remember, I say this all the time, we're not trying to survive in these things. Even though the name of the show is Scratch and Surviving, the pool is called the Survivor Pool. We're not trying to survive. We're trying to win the entire pool. If that means getting eliminated early, making a good decision from a game theory standpoint, then so be it. Um, I know it's fun to be in the pool each and every week, but I'm trying to win these things and I'm trying to give you guys uh, the advantage that you can have over your pool participants in doing this. So head back to the grid here and let's just take a look. Now, obviously the Rams have some value here for the future, especially week 13, but that's why I say in a small pool, I'm going ahead. We're firing on the Rams because we may not get to week 13. I can't worry about week 13. Now, when I have a shot to potentially either win the pool, maybe get down to the last two or three people here with the Rams. If I take the Rams, so we're definitely going to take the Rams if you're in a smaller pool and you have the Rams available. If you're in a larger pool, multiple entries, you're definitely going to want to have some of those on the Rams. If you want to hold the Rams for a couple of picks, you know, again, this is going to vary on how many picks you have, how large the pool is. You may hold one back, two back for this Jacksonville game in week 13. Because when we look at Jacksonville, that week 13 game, that's going to be the best game, but you can have teams like Buffalo. You probably either have not taken them or will be taking them before week 13. Tampa, same situation. You've either taken them or you may want to take them before then. Kansas City, same thing. Arizona, right? So these are all teams that we may already have by week 13. So, you know, in a large pool, if we take the Rams here this week, we may be in trouble in week 13, depending on what our lines look like if we have any of these teams available. But as you can see, these teams have a lot of easy games mixed in here in week 9, 10, and 11. It's going to be likely that we take a lot of these better teams uh, before week 13, the teams that look to be good week 13 teams. But I'm not going to worry about that. Even in a larger pool, I'm not going to be totally concerned with that. We do have options. Minnesota, Detroit would be one of them. And you know injuries change things quite a bit. So especially a small pool, we may not get to week 13. I'm not going to worry about it. We have a shot at a big leverage play. Now let's look at the other teams here this week. Buffalo, the second choice. Not a terrible play, but we've got so many options here with Buffalo. If you've not taken Buffalo, most people probably have in your pool, but if you've not taken Buffalo and not taken the Rams, the Rams are going to be the smarter play. Now, if you have taken the Rams, you've got to start thinking about taking Buffalo because now you're going to get almost as good a leverage here with Buffalo as you did with the Rams. Now, the problem with taking Buffalo is look at these games left. 
Jacksonville next week, right? That's going to be a great game, but you have Indianapolis against the Jets, which is an option. No one's probably, well, actually a lot of people have taken Indianapolis as well. So it gets complicated. It's hard for me to do the podcast geared towards every single person. You're going to have to look at your line and where you've gone um, with your entries if you've got the one entry. But keep in mind, if you're going with Buffalo, you're passing up on a lot of really strong weeks that they're going to have. Week 10, they're going to be the best team at the Jets. They're probably going to be the highest uh, point spread that week. They get the Colts in Week 11, maybe not necessarily our favorite game since we've got Tennessee against Houston. We're going to have Cleveland against Detroit. Tampa against the Giants. So I'm not too worried about that week. Um, week 12 looks to be, right now on paper, is going to be a tough week. Dallas is the best team right now, according to Survivor Grid, at minus 6.5 over Vegas. Tampa, again, we have probably better opportunities to take Tampa. But they get the Colts. <clears throat> excuse me. And then Cincinnati is only 3.5 points over Pitt. So, you know, that week 12 is going to be a week where we might be losing quite a bit of people. But we can't worry about that. If you could potentially save Dallas for that week, that's going to be uh, that's going to definitely be beneficial. A lot of people still have Dallas left. We'll see how it plays out as these weeks go on. So Buffalo, a lot of future value. If you did want to pass on Buffalo, totally understandable. Now Cincinnati is the team most people are going to. Why? Because a lot of people still have them left. Now, if you guys have been following us from the beginning, you probably took Cincinnati. And we took them in the week against Jacksonville. That was a tight game. They could have easily lost the game. They did win. That was the Thursday night game. And in doing so, you know, we did look ahead and we were planning on being able to take the Rams here. And if you did it exactly the way we've been going um, and picking in the smaller pools where you're pretty chalky, that's how we want to play smaller pools. We want to be pretty chalky. Then you're at a big advantage here because now, as I said, Everyone is forced in on Cincinnati. It's the third best option, and most people have taken the Rams and Buffalo. So now you're forcing people into a hole. That's what you want. It's not about, is Cincinnati going to win? Cincinnati just blew out Baltimore. They're better than the Jets. Jets are terrible. We're not worried about that. We're not handicapping these games. We're saying, as far as the numbers that the sports books are concerned, they're the third best team here this week. We haven't seen a 10-point team go down, a double-digit Team go down, it's going to happen eventually. Maybe it'll be Cincinnati. We hope for that. If it's Cincinnati, you guys following this podcast are going to be in a great situation this week. I would hate to be jumping on board of Cincinnati. Now, if I'm in a large pool with a lot of entries, of course I'm going to have to sprinkle some Cincinnati's in because that's the whole point of having a lot of entries is that we could diversify a little bit and keep ourselves alive until we get deeper into this where we may have to take some chances. When we get deeper into it, that's when we start playing it like some of you who are in smaller pools right now. Now, Kansas City is the other big option this week. They've got the Giants, minus 10. Of course, Kansas City has looked terrible. The Giants coming off a big win. Again, I don't get scared here that Kansas City's you know not playing well. As long as Mahomes is healthy, I'm okay with this game. I don't expect the Giants to win. But like I said, we're not trying to handicap. As far as we're concerned, this is the fourth best game on the board. Now, do I love jumping on Kansas City? Here, not nearly as much as the Rams, right? I'm not getting nearly as much leverage. And the reason people are 20% on Kansas City as the fourth best option is because we haven't really taken Kansas City much this year. One, they haven't won a lot of games. And two, they have, they've played a really tough schedule. There haven't been opportunities where you'd want to take Kansas City. This is the first opportunity we'd want to take Kansas City. Now, I have no problem taking them. Certainly, if you've taken the Rams and Buffalo, you've got to be looking at Kansas City here. We look at their schedule. It is a difficult schedule. The easiest game they have upcoming is Week 13 against Denver. Now, we've talked about Week 13. We're going to wind up taking a lot of teams, uh, if we survive all the way to Week 13, that are the best teams. So we can't worry about that too much now. Then they get Vegas at home in Week 14. Pittsburgh Week 17. There's not a lot of great options, which is hard to imagine with Kansas City. So I have no problem with you guys jumping on Kansas City, even in a small pool. If you wanted to play it, you know, crazy and whole, if you had the Rams and you wanted to go to Kansas City, I much per prefer the Rams, but you could certainly convince me on taking Kansas City here and then having the Rams deeper. Now, it's a it, it's more risk, and I don't like to take that much risk in a smaller pool because I don't know if I'm getting to week 13. Larger pool, absolutely. You want to fire away at Kansas City, go for it. 
And then if even if you have the Rams left, because then you can save the Rams for later, larger pool, you're going to have to go deep, probably 18 weeks, depending on how large your pool is. All right. So that's a little bit of an overview of what we're looking at on Survivor Grid. And let's jump into the spreadsheet as we usually do and see what the spreadsheet says um, as far as picks. Now, I've knocked it down, the weight, the future weight down to 10%. So this is going to be for a really small pool or pool that doesn't have many entries left. Again, like the, think about my brother's pool with 13 people left. That I'd be looking at 10% future weight. I don't want to get too heavy here on future weight because we don't know how much longer we're going to go in the future with this. What is this? What's the sheet telling me? It's telling me to take the Rams. Now, again, this sheet does not know who I've taken, who I haven't taken. But the Rams become the best play, which is what we thought of to begin with. They're the biggest favorite. They're the team that we were planning on taking last week if we could have saved them, right? So everything's playing into the Rams. This is the team we want. It's a great leverage spot, especially in a small pool. Now, if you've taken, if we look down, really, we just have to look at this number. This is going to tell us who the best uh, plays are. The higher the number, the better here. And that's based on the the weight, the forward weighting or the future weighting that I put in here. Um, so let's assume you don't have the Rams. The next best team is going to be Buffalo. No shock here, no surprise. Um, and then Cincinnati is going to be your next best team. So if you're in a pool that is small, I would really look to avoid you. Hopefully, if you've been listening to us, you actually took Cincinnati already. If you haven't, if that's your only option, if your options are between Cincinnati and Kansas City, I like dipping all the way down and going to Kansas City. Give yourself in a small pool. Remember, guys, small pools we're talking about now. Give yourself some leverage, right? And the other thing is go look at your pool and figure out what everyone's taken. You know, there's a possibility that you're in an odd pool where seven out of the 13 people have the Rams left. Well, that might be different. That's Your numbers are going to certainly be different than this. You're probably going to get a lot of people taking the Rams. So... Just because these numbers say something don't does not mean that your pool is necessarily going to act the same exact way, especially as the numbers get smaller. The smaller the numbers, we're not going to um, really sync up with Survivor Grid because Survivor gets going over thousands of pools with tens of thousands of people. If I'm in a pool of 10 people, a lot of people are playing game theory like you're trying to play. That's what happened in my brother's pool. Everyone wound up taking Arizona that week. And he wound up finding, he was shocked to be on the Rams all by himself, right? So in his case, he cannot take the Rams now this week. And he's one of those people, like a lot of people, cannot do it. So if you were able to save the Rams, I say, let's jump on the Rams in these small pools. Then you're going to look towards Buffalo. And I would highly suggest Kansas City if those options aren't available to you, even if you have Cincinnati as a potential uh, pick because I want to try to get that leverage over the field. Now, let's just talk about larger pools. Let's jack this up 40%. You're in a larger pool. What is this telling us? It's still giving me the Rams, which I'm fine with, but we talked about this when we were looking at the grid where we've got an option in week 13, so I don't mind dipping down. This is telling us Cincinnati here is the second best option. Um, in a larger pool, I don't mind either getting on a team where um, a lot of people are on if I don't have a good leverage spot. Now, if I have the Rams, I'm taking it, okay? But if I don't have a great leverage spot, if I've had the Rams and I took Buffalo and you don't want to take Kansas City, I'm okay in a larger pool taking Cincinnati. It's fine, okay? We'll move. Not every week is going to be the great leverage spot for you. It's going to be based on what your line looks like. And when I say lines, I'm talking about your entries, right? From week one up until week seven at this point, what that line looks like and who you've taken. So I'm okay here taking Cincinnati, joining the crew, hoping that Cincinnati wins, we move on, and then maybe next week, depending on who you have available to you, you may have, that's your spot where you can pick, okay? Because you may say, you know what, next week I'm going to have a better situation here than um, Kansas City if that's my only option for some leverage, right? Let's look at the survivor grid. Let's just look at next week quickly. You've got Indianapolis against the Jets. So the thing is, next week, probably not going to be a whole lot of leverage because everyone's going to be on Indianapolis. No, I said, well, I keep saying no one took them, but there are quite a few people who have taken Indianapolis, but you might be one of them. Let's say you've not taken Indianapolis or you have taken Indianapolis. 
um, and you've probably taken Buffalo. Now you're on Dallas. So there's going to be a ton of people on Dallas. It'll be Dallas and Indianapolis next week. Um, you know, are these the high leverage spots that you necessarily want to be in? You know, it's it's not going to be a great leverage situation next week. Not nearly as good as what we've got this week. When you've got the Rams at a 14 and a half point favorite or Kansas City as a 10 point favorite, like this is the time we can potentially pick up on the field. Do I expect it? Do I expect, do I expect you know, Buffalo to lose? No. Do I expect Cincinnati to lose? No. But it happens and that's the whole reason these pools get destroyed. As you can see, there's an 80% chance. What do I have on, on, uh, on my sheet, we've got 88%. Cincinnati's got an 83% chance of winning. So we don't expect them to lose, obviously. But these teams lose. Double-digit teams lose. It happens. And you want to be on the right side. We're not trying to pick the winner. We're hoping that when the Cincinnati loses, we're going to be one of the few people standing here. But like I said, for a big pool, I'm okay with it. If you guys want to jump on um, and join the party on Cincinnati. I think I would prefer in larger pools taking Kansas City. Let's just put in if we've got multiple entries. I still have that one pool. Where I've got 24 entries. There's about uh, 2,700 people left in that pool and what it would look like. So it kind of wants me to, if I'm at 40%, it would have, you know, it wants me to take the Rams, obviously Buffalo, nothing crazy here. Cincinnati, Kansas City. Now it's giving me negative one. Just it's a, just a rounding thing, but if we just look at these numbers, uh, this one actually this column, and we're looking at what our best teams are. These are the 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 top teams here are going to be our best teams. Uh, it goes all the way down to Arizona. Now, do you have the guts in a large pool to throw one on Arizona? I might here with twenty four. To be honest with you, um, I don't have many Arizonas left. Most people don't. But if I have an entry, which I do think of the 24, I'm pretty sure I have one or two with Arizona. It's a gutsy move, but think about it again. We're trying, we're, we're trying, this is the whole reason we have 24 entries. Um, started with a lot more than that, but this whole reason you have the multiple entries is you're hoping for that week where these top teams get destroyed and you sneak yourself in with one of these Arizonas, right? We're not doing that with one entry. It doesn't make any sense, but you've got a lot of entries in a pool. You sneak one Arizona in there. And then, you know, Buffalo and Cincinnati lose. And the next thing you know, you're right in the hunt. Now you've got a real shot to win a pool like that. I mean, with 2,700 people left, if Buffalo lost and Cincinnati lost, I mean, we might be down to under 1,000 people, right? And now we're putting ourselves in this monster pool. We're putting ourselves in a real good shot. I mean, if the numbers are right and I've got, you know, if it goes to if, if it goes exactly like they're saying here, if Buffalo somehow Buffalo lost, and or let's just say Cincinnati and and, and Kansas City lost, that's sixty three. Let's call it you know sixty five percent of the pool. You're talking, you know, there might be a thousand people left in your pool if and you sneak away. You know, no one's taking Arizona because they can't, um, and they're the fifth choice. So that's why we want to diversify a little bit when we've got a lot of entries. This means nothing to you if you've got one or two entries. You're not even thinking about taking Arizona. Maybe in just a massive pool where that's your shot, right? So think about it this way, guys. We are in big, big, massive pools. You're, it's almost a lottery ticket. So you've got to take risk here at some point. You've got to take some risk. But what I, what I told you guys in week one is we want to take smart risks. The risk that I see some people take a couple of weeks ago, 19 people got knocked out of the same pool taking Detroit as an underdog. Like, that's not the risk we need to take. What I told you is we could take some really good risks, like Arizona as an almost touchdown favorite, if you have that ability, they're almost a touchdown favorite with nobody on them. Like, why would I want to take a three-point underdog that nobody's picking when I could be in a situation where I could take a seven-point favorite that nobody's picking? So that's what we're trying to get ourselves into. That's why I say when you're in these large pools, I like for you to have a lot of entries in them. So for you guys in the small pools with one entry, single bullets, I think you know where you get what you have to do here this week. For those of you with multiple entries, a lot of entries in a larger pool, then you are going to have maybe a slightly different strategy. As always, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you guys are doing, what you're thinking, where your pick is going, who you're taking. And, um, you know, it's an interesting week and they get that way as we get deeper into this. It's not as clear cut each and every week because you want to try to figure out 
the future as as well as this week. So hopefully you guys will be with me next week as you continue on your search here and strive to win your pool. And uh, hopefully I still have my entries left, even if it's not 24. We probably don't even want 24 of my entries left in that one because that would mean hopefully one of the top ones get knocked out. I'd be more than happy to have like 10 entries with 60% of the pool um, getting knocked out. But anyway, we shall see next week. Good luck here in week eight. Again, guys, I appreciate it. Subscribe, like, do all that stuff, and download the Sharp app, which I did not mention. Inside the Sharp app, you'll get the free picks of the day. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, a whole bunch of good stuff. I won't bore you guys. I'll see you guys next week, hopefully surviving.